when I go to lecture to talk in the uh, villages, I have seen uh, families of the martyrs, for example, getting me by the lab and saying, are you really going to allow Greeks to come to this village? If you do, I'll kill you first and then the Greeks. Uh, there are feelings like that. But you can no, fanatics. You cannot, you know, people who have been hurt, they have lost their loved ones, mm -hmm. they have suffered as, as a result of it. You have these on both sides. And that is the danger of, uh, of Cyprus in the future. If we cannot really find a reasonable solution which will prevent an eruption later, that is our difficulty. But hatred as such, you don't, you don't find it. Resentment uh, for not being treated as an equal. Mm -hmm. for not being allowed to feel part of Cyprus, to be regarded, as uh, Mr. Vasiliou said in Europe. Uh, Turks are 400 years old uh, guests in Cyprus, in Europe. Mm -hmm. uh, well, if we are guests in Cyprus, then you don't feel uh, very happy. And uh, uh, I think, I think uh, education has a lot of blame to carry on its shoulders. Uh, educating young people that the other side is your enemy, for example. You do it more than we do. Uh, I was, uh, <laughs> Mr. Loiz, no Loi comment. Mr. Loizu yes. uh, was working with me, he's a very good friend of mine. Unfortunately, he lost a son during these uh, wars. Uh, he had a very pretty uh, daughter, Lula. Mm -hmm. And uh, one day, Loizu told me, let us uh, uh, give me a lift because my car is in the garage. Uh, we will pick up Lula and take me home. Uh, she had just started uh, kindergarten. Mm -hmm. And we went and took up this pretty girl. And on the way, this is Eoka time. Mm -hmm. Eoka time. When you say I'm uh, so rough with Eoka people, mm -hmm. uh, you can ask mean. Loizu. Uh, mean I, is the word. Yes, you, you can ask yes. uh, Loizu. I wasn't. Uh, he asked uh, the little girl, Lula, who is our worst enemies? And Lula said immediately, Turk's father. And said, but why? We are killing the British, the British are killing us. Uh, what have the Turks done to us? Mm -hmm. She said, uh, our teacher told us, with this fight with the British is a temporary one. The fight with the Turks is forever. That's they are our... Uh, and uh, Louisa turned to me in English and said, Ralph, you know that had I expected this answer, I would not have answered sure. the question. I, I, want to, I, I want to rebuff this by saying that obviously the same thing uh, does happen and was happening in Turkish schools. But I want to leave it at, uh, at, at this. You mentioned but I have a proposal which has uh, been left on the table, that we should have a joint committee mm -hmm. to look at our books and to start cleansing them of this poisonous literature. As sure. far as we can, I not not to deny history, yes. but to, to to remove the poisonous matters. I think you will find any 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 logical person agreeing with this, Mr. Natash. But I want to just leave uh, this at this at this point uh, uh, because you did mention a very important word uh, insofar as I'm concerned, the future. But before we talk about the future, uh, we need to take a break. Kiris ki kiris agamena mikro dialima ke se libo thema sti kipali mazi me dongiro nektash. Mr. Dehtash, uh, before the break, you mentioned that you've known Mr. Glevidis since 1949. What can you tell, uh, tell me about him? What do you think of Mr. Glevidis? Well, he's a, uh, an excellent lawyer, very good friend, uh, when he wants to be friendly. Uh, but as he himself has declared recently, he, he seems to feel more like uh, Hyperides, the code name that uh, Grivas gave to him while doing his job, then uh, Kredis, the friend of all Cypriots. Don't you think you're being a bit harsh on him? No, that is what he said. He said that he, he is the Kredis to whom Grivas has given the code name of Hyperides, and as such, he will uh, continue the struggle of Hellenism in Cyprus in the trenches. When did he mention this? Uh, I don't remember in the past 50 years hearing Mr. Clinton say this. Only, only, only uh, about six months ago. Six months ago. These are the little things which uh, make us sit up and say, are we being too soft 
are we melting, uh, believing that there is a possibility for a solution? These are the things which hurt us. Uh, naturally, Kredis is a politician. He has to say some, sometimes things which uh, he thinks the audience... This is what I was going to, to say, uh, that perhaps he mentioned this uh, for some reason. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I cannot take a stand. Uh, all I know is that uh, his actions uh, uh, differ uh, f from what you uh, mentioned before. Um, uh, in a tremendous way, he's prepared to accept uh, a federal solution. He's uh, prepared to make compromises. Uh, but I don't want to get into this. No, I want don't, to don't get into this because, want, yes. because then we'll... Uh, we'll uh, no, no, we may come to this yes. because I want to, to, yes. to, to, to hear your points of view, to hear well, the points of view of the Turkish thing. people. I'll tell you one thing. Uh, had it been any other leader after 1974, after Turkish intervention, I am sure most of the humanitarian problems which we solved with Kredis within a year, completely, would still be on our agenda. Had it been, for example, any other leader, don't let me give you names, uh, we would still be at them and uh, humani human many humanitarian problems would still have been on our agenda. With Kredis, he took the courage, uh, he needed me, I needed him in order to remove the uh, difficulties from our peoples. Because both sides were suffering, it was very easy to balance things and to finish them. And Kredis had the courage to do it. Now, ever since, however, political uh, uh, aides of his, let us call them, people who elected him, who helped him to, to election. Kipriano is a declared man against uh, federation. The church is against but he's, federation. Uh, he's accepted uh, a federal Lip solution. Lip service, he, he hasn't. He has, he, Kipriano has statements that he never believed in federation, that all he, he never did, believed maybe. A lot of us uh, also share his uh, point of view. Yes, but uh, he never worked for it. When we came to the point of signing an agreement in 85-86, he said, no, I'm not ready. When Secretary General thought that we were ready, we had been invited to sign, he said, no, no, no I, I just came to uh, talk about these things. I'm not ready. And he went away, and that was the end of it. So the church is against federation. EOKB, which is uh, in his party, is against federation. Lissaridis is against federation. So Kredis is in a difficult position. If he wants federation, if he wanted federation, we could have done it long ago. But all the parties have accepted the solution of federation. What they, in name. What, in what, name. No. What they de disagree with is your presentation of what a, veter a federal state is. But I think we're moving very fast, Mr. Nikitaj. You know, we're getting to punching each other. <laughs> Let's go back to the 50s again. Mm -hmm. I want you to sort of, uh, uh, I, I want us to relax and go slowly, slowly and gradually come to this. Because as I said yes. from the beginning, yes. Yes. what interests me really is not to um, get in a debate where I will not be able to convince you definitely. A lot of uh, politicians I know, I know. haven't yes, yes, convinced right. you. Uh, uh, including four presidents, uh, Greek Cypriot presidents. So I'm not going to be the one to convince you that your uh, your policy is not justified, that uh, you're wrong, and uh, we'll leave this. All right, but <laughs> before you leave it, I'll just <laughs> mention one thing. Look at the resolution which your parliament passed the, the other day. Where is federation in it? They refer to 1989 papers which they uh, submitted to, to us and to the security. Because Council. maybe it's and there is nothing in it. it maybe is a it's concessions state. that hurt, Mr. Dektash. I don't know. Uh, so uh, let, let's take it easy. Let's go back to the. Uh, talk to me about your family. Talk to me how you got married, how you found your wife, your children, all this. Well, uh, when my wife was born, I was nine years old, and uh, she was the daughter. Uh, of uh, my uncles, my father's brother's daughter. She was the granddaughter of my uncle. Okay, you got me confused, but never mind. She was the granddaughter. <laughs> so we are, we are second, second cousins. Second cousins yes. First cousin cannot marry, but second cousins. Uh -huh. And uh, when she was born, uh, she was given to my lap, saying, here is your fiancé. Really? And naturally, we all laughed at it. Ah, uh, a joke. It, it was a joke. Yes. Uh, but she grew up to be a very pretty girl. And before I left for uh, England to study, uh, amongst the family, we, we were uh, uh, sort of uh, engaged. She was uh, 14 or 15 then. 
and I was 23. And when I came back three years later, uh, we got engaged. Mm -hmm. And another uh, year or so, in 1949, we got married. When I was appointed uh, at the Attorney General's office, uh, we got married and we spent our uh, honeymoon in uh, Trodos. Uh, lodgings were given to uh, Attorney General staff. Uh, mm -hmm. We had a lodging there. And uh, a friend of ours was coming, a single man, Judge Zekia. Uh, we invited him for lunch and we didn't know what to cook. She didn't know how to, to cook, what to cook. And we tried to make some uh, kebab uh, in, in the oven. And I got four oaks of potatoes and two oaks of meat. And uh, it was a disaster. When uh, Zekabe came, it was nothing to, to look at. <laughs> but uh, uh, that is how, how, how we started. Uh -huh. um, I know you had... Um Five children, and I know that six, uh, six, 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 and um, that you did uh, go through a, a personal tragedy, losing lost three of them. Yes. Through three of the, of, of, of the, you want to share this with us? Uh, you want to tell yes, us? Yes, uh, the first uh, tragedy which we had was uh, when my second son uh, had continuously tonsillitis, and uh, I was saying to my friend's doctor, never have a friend uh, a doctor to my friend uh, who wanted to operate upon him, don't because he's too weak. Uh, I had to go was to... It, the, uh, it was a Turkish doctor, yes? Turkish. I had to go to Turkey in order to have the people that Britain, British uh, government had taken into custody as persons belonging to TMT. And uh, they were not releasing them. Uh, they were in a camp. I went to Turkey in order to ask the Turkish government to, to use its influence and to free these people. And while I was there, I, apparently this uh, doctor, a friend of mine, told uh, my wife, and Dr. Kuchuk joined in, the saying that uh, Dash is afraid of operations. Mm -hmm. Let us finish with it, so that when he comes, he finds the boy up and about. And uh, he was operated upon, something went wrong, and he died on the operating table. I was informed in uh, Turkey. Naturally How old was, was the, the boy? Seven, seven years old. Seven years old. I read somewhere that um, uh, one of the reasons uh, this tragedy did happen is because uh, you refused the attention of a Greek Cypriot uh, doctor. No, no, this is very bad propaganda. There was, no, there was no such thing. I mean, uh, I was I was operated upon by Jorgakis, uh, uh, Jor is it? Jorgakis, uh, the famous uh, uh, doctor you had you had then. I don't know whether he's still living. Mm. He op he operated upon in my tonsillitis when so I was. So you, you, you didn't have any no. consumption. So well, my first son was born uh, at the Greek Papa, Tre Papa, Papa Petrus clinic. Mm -hmm because we had no Turkish doctors. Mm -hmm. When we had, we began having Turkish doctors and midwives and so on. Yes. Uh, people How did you lose? Uh, the, the then we had a daughter uh, born to us, and uh, the, uh, he, her, her doctor was Petridis, Mr. P mm -hmm. Pieridis, sorry. Pieridis, yes. Yeah, Pieridis. He was the only ch children's doctor then. Uh, and he was a very good doctor. So by the time the girl was about uh, three months old, we could see that uh, there was difficulty in keeping herself up. And by six months, it became evident that there was something wrong. And we took her to Beirut. We took her to Turkey. We took her to England. And uh, it was a tumor in, on the brain. And when she was about two and a half uh, years old, I took her to Great Ormington uh, mm -hmm. Hospital, and the next day she was going to be operated upon, and she died that night. And mm -hmm. they rang up to say she is dead, and she is buried in England. And the third one, of course, was Raif, my yeah, eldest the, son, the who, 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 who died in a car accident. So uh, these were tragedies, which uh, naturally crushed us. Uh, but again. We have such a big responsibility vis-à-vis -vis our people that uh, the work continued in spite of that. And probably because of that, I could think of nothing else except the Cyprus yes. problem. So 
I understand the tragedies of people who have lost their sons, their loved ones, on both sides during the war, especially uh, Loiso, when he lost his son. I couldn't even say uh, condolences to him. Mm -hmm. I didn't have the heart to. But I grieved as much as, uh, not as much as he, but uh, very, very seriously, because all these deaths were unnecessary. They were unnecessary. Greek leadership should have known that there is a Turkish factor in Cyprus, and it is impossible to, do, to achieve what they set out to achieve. A. Secondly, that the 1960 agreements had done no wrong to Cyprus. It wasn't what we wanted. You ask me, when did I uh, choose partition as a policy? Partition was chosen as a policy by Turkey. Mm -hmm. And we were grieved here because Turkey was abandoning half of Cyprus to the Greeks. This is how the, you felt. This is how, 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 how before, we felt. You mentioned before, Mr. <laughs> Natasha, uh, TMT. Did you have anything to do about uh, the creation of these uh, um, before TMT, organizations? Yes, before TMT, there was Volkan. There was uh, other little groups, mm -hmm. completely undisciplined. And you didn't know what was happening within the community. Who was hitting who and why? Why all of a sudden there was a riot and Greek houses were burned, Greek shops were burned, when we should have kept quiet and uh, shown to the British that here is what has been done to us. Do something yourself. So uh, I saw that uh, the thing was not going well uh, in the right direction. It was going in the direction Greek Cypriots wanted. Are you saying that it was in the hands, uh, you felt that it was in the hands of fanatics? It was in the hands of, uh, I wouldn't call them fanatics. Uh, I, I would call them people who thought they were doing their duty to, in order to prevent enosis, but they were not disciplined, they knew nothing about it. So uh, I, I talked to a few people and uh, we said, let us uh, make a declaration that now there is a very big uh, organization afoot and that all these are uh, cancelled. You stated before, Mr. Nittash, that uh, you're very much against uh, this violence, and that you were um, uh, sort of uh, sorrowed by the fact that a lot of people got killed and it was not necessary. And yet we find you in 1955, 66, 56, uh, uh, being responsible in creating an organization that was uh, taking guns um, uh, to support whatever idea, but the uh, outcome would have been the death of people on both sides. Well, uh, you see, had we not done that, had we not disciplined them, there would have been far worse bloodshed and it would have been against us. It would have been an undisciplined sort of uh, uh, attack on all fronts without any reason for it and the uh, Greek Cypriots would have taken full advantage of it and crushed us, uh, and no one would have helped us. Mm -hmm. So by disciplining this, we had no guns at, at, the, at the beginning. It was, uh, we had nine uh, shotguns uh, or uh, pistols, which went around uh, Cyprus, I was told, uh, mm -hmm. from hand to hand, in order, if a Turk was killed in Paphos, for example, a gun would go from Limassol to Paphos to take revenge. This was, this was the sort of thing. When we put the brakes on the TMT, uh, it took us about nine, nine or twelve months even uh, until we really disciplined it. Uh, after disciplining it, uh, there was uh, less bloodshed. So this, you're saying, you're stating that the real reason why you uh, personally got involved in creating TMT was to sort of control the violence. Control the violence and uh, give, it, give it a policy not to do it, uh, to do things which would be used against us. We were fighting against gunmen who wanted to convert Cyprus into a Greek island. And uh, you cannot think uh, there uh, politically, uh, what shall we do? Shall we do nothing? No, you have to do something. And that something you have to do is to take precautions that you, you, you people are not, are not hurt uh, If very I much. were to ask you, Mr. Dekitash, who started this violence, what would be your answer? Well, I think it is obvious. Uh, uh, Aoka started it, and uh, violence against Greeks by Turks started only at but the end of But you said the that this resentment, uh, this resentment um, existed long before Aoka started uh, the uh, struggle for Gnosis. Again, even even there, you will see in the from the British archives, uh, we have a little booklet. You will see if you read that carefully. Uh, 
The well, question remains, of course, uh, whether we trust the British archives. Well, you will see there complaints lodged by the Turks uh, against what is happening and so on. Uh, we, must, we must accept this. Greek Cypriots and Greece had the idea of converting Cyprus into, into a Greek island, and they felt justified. They said, this is justice, this is the right thing. We didn't agree with them. Mm -hmm. There is the conflict. There is the conflict. The 1960 agreements compromised on these two divergent views. The clever thing would have been to go ahead with, the, with this compromise, to honor it, not to destroy it. But if you have seen the Agrida's plan, you must uh, realize that there was a complete plan how to destroy it. And it was destroyed. Can I ask you a question on this, uh, Mr. Nektash? Are you a democratic man? Do you be, uh, really feel that you believe in democracy? Well, uh, had I not believed in democracy, I would not have uh, been here in this place. Well, because the reason I've asked you this question is, if, had you believed in democracy, then you, you should and you must believe in the right of people deciding for their future. And if, let's say, this particular place is, has 82% majority Greeks, and their decision is to unite with uh, Greece. I'm talking about that time, I'm not talking see, now. Uh, yes, yes. Then you should accept the decision of the majority. Uh, well, if we, if we, as I said, if you isolate areas and ask people what they want, then you are uh, done in. You must look at the, at the struggle. What is the struggle for? It is for union with Greece. Are you for it? Are you going to vote for it? You are not. Why? because you have your own historical and other reasons, because you look upon it as a colonization by Greece, and you want your freedom. If you cannot get it, then you want Turkey to take you over. So it is these conflicting things, and I repeat again, even Kredis has used this. He has said several times, we, the Greek Cypriots, are a minority in this region. Why? Because the conflict is for union of Cyprus with Greece, or with Turkey. Well, obviously. Uh, now, we've then, then I have another answer to you. This problem, this question, has been decided under the 1960 agreements. We have put our signatures to it. Mm -hmm. We have established a partnership state on the condition that one side will not dominate the other. We, one side by itself cannot be the government of Cyprus. This is an honorable agreement. If you want to change it, you should have left it to time and you should have dealt with the Turkish Cypriots in such a good way that they would see no objection in 20 years time, in 10 years time, to changing it for the good of Cyprus, for the good of themselves. But this is not what happened. As soon as we, ag we agreed on the agreement, uh, the attempt to change it, not to give us our rights, started uh, to be put into effect with NOC's declarations continuing unabated. So we had to sit up and uh, protect ourselves. So I repeat again, you cannot have one country of two peoples, composed of two peoples, if one of the peoples is at constant threat by the other, I'll come and dominate you, I will rule you.